Hey everybody, Matt Colville here. Before we get into the meat of this video, I wanted to announce the winners of the giveaway. Chris Jones and Brian Kenline each won a copy of Hexographer, Dungeonographer, and Cityographer, along with Inkwell's Heraldry Tool. I suspect they will get great use out of them. Congratulations, guys. We hit 17,000 subscribers way faster than I expected, thanks mostly to a great article from Geek and Sundry. I didn't expect that, so we actually had way fewer entrants this time than last time, because it took us less time to hit our goal. So we'll do another different giveaway soon. Also, people are still working on adventurelookup.com. Some people have gotten burned out, but mostly because they did a lot of work. If we can finish that work, then all the effort people have put in will pay off. We need people experienced with the React framework for the front end, as well as people experienced with Django, or knowledgeable in Python and willing to learn, for the back end. One person we definitely need is a UI UX lead, someone to define a specific workflow, appearance, etc., built around the user experience. If you think you can help, come by the Discord server, there's a link in the doobly-doo. We have a lot of people eager to start entering data, but we need the database working first. Okay, on to the episode. I used to work in the pen and paper business, and part of that meant working the booth at Gen Con, and part of that meant standing there and listening to people who played our games coming up to us at the booth saying, let me tell you about my character. Listening to these folks was, when I started, considered this burden you had to endure. The stories were terrible, but the good news is they went on forever. It was so bad and such a common experience as a designer in that business that you saw people wearing t-shirts that said, do not tell me about your character. Okay, so why were these stories so uniformly awful to listen to? Certainly one reason was because these folks weren't storytellers. Okay. But I noticed something listening to them. These people were compelled. They had experienced something extraordinary, something that felt real to them when they were doing it the way all good narrative does. And it was more meaningful because it wasn't something they read or watched. It was something they felt they did, accomplished, achieved, experienced. And because of that, they had to share it. They were like the ancient mariner in reverse. Let me tell you about this albatross around my neck. It's amazing. In the eight years or so I did this at Gen Con and Origins and GTS and Dragon Con, I never had anyone come up to me and tell me about the Game Master's campaign, about the DM's story. It was always, without exception, the player's story. There was no t-shirt saying, do not tell me about your campaign. Why? The answer is the topic of this week's episode your story versus their story. In order to run D&D, the DM must have some content prepared. Memorable games happen when the DM makes the game about the players, their goals, their ideas, their plans, not the content the DM prepared. In order to do this, the DM needs a narrative framework and we call that an adventure. But for some DMs, and many new DMs especially, I think, they get so excited about their framework, it becomes a story unto itself. And that content, that story, becomes the thing the DM is excited about. Not the player's goals and plans. I don't even think choice is a good word here. It's a distraction. It's misleading to say good games are about player choice because bad DMs think that which spell you use or which iron golem you attack is enough choice. Good games are about the player's goals and their plans. You may have a great evil that needs defeating. You may have scattered some plot coupons around your world and the players must collect them and redeem them to the DM to get the finale of the campaign. But all of these things are just excuses to move the action along and provide opportunities for the players to develop their own goals and make their own plans. In a good game, the DM's content is a means to an end and the end is empowering the players. In a bad game, the DM's content is the end, and the players are just a means to get there. Players hate that. There are lots of reasons a game might fall apart, but the single most common reason I've experienced as a player, and now read about in the comments, for why a game was unfun is it wasn't about us, the players. The DM had a story they wanted to tell, and by God they were going to tell it come hell or high water. The loudest warning signal I get from new DMs on Twitter or in the comments is, I've got this great story I've developed. When I hear that, I think, eep. Now, certainly they may mean story like adventure, in which case, great. But I never hear that. I never hear, I have a great adventure ready. I almost titled this episode Story vs. Adventure. I'm basically inventing in this video the difference between a story and an adventure. A story is this thing the DM has worked out. All the characters, the epic moments, the betrayals and reversals, the reveals, and the ending. They're very proud of this. They feel it is full of player choice, but they mean choice like, which door should we open? Or should I heal or attack? An adventure is this framework. The DM knows who the bad guys are, what they want, and how they're going to go about getting it. And many of these may involve epic moments. They know how they're going to hook the players, get the PC's motivations to intersect with the bad guy's goals. But apart from that, they have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, maybe the DM knows what's going to happen next. There was a cliffhanger and the DM spent the week thinking about, okay, what happens next? But they did that because before the cliffhanger, they didn't know. 
Does Matt Mercer have any idea what's going to happen next on Critical Role? I watched last week's epic cliffhanger, and here's what I think. I think this is spoiler free. I think he knew the bad guy was going to reveal himself at a critical moment, and basically which critical moment, but there were lots of opportunities. The moment played out, and we were all surprised. He probably knows what the bad guy will do next, and how the rest of the group are going to hear about it, because I have to find out. But apart from that, I bet he doesn't know. The bad guy sprung his trap and is in the city somewhere eviling with his new victim, and will probably continue to do that in a holding pattern until Vox Machina show up. How are they going to show up? He doesn't know. How will the bad guy react? He doesn't know. He can't know because he doesn't know Vox Machina's plan yet. But he knows they're going to do something, so he figures out how they learn about it and then sits back and watches and listens. The players plot and scheme, and he weighs two basic things. One, how reasonable is that plan? Does it depend on ridiculous things that probably won't work, or is it basically sound? Two, how will the bad guy react? This requires knowing only two things, the bad guy's motivations and personality and his abilities. That's it. Those two things are running the game. The fact that Matt has no real idea what happens next is what makes stories like the epic adventure I'm sure we're about to get memorable. The epic tale of Vox Machina rescuing someone. No spoilers. Matt Mercer, tell me if I'm wrong. Now, if they come up with a plan and it's ridiculous, it's usually because of a misalignment between what the players assume and what the DM assumes, and this is easily corrected. Just talk to the players as they plan. Uh, no, remember, you gave that cloak to him back in the Feywild. You don't have it anymore. Don't wait for them to be in the middle of enacting their plan to correct their misunderstandings. That is, as it says in the Bible, a dick move. And, of course, the clock is ticking. Even though I bet the bad guy is basically going to be in stasis with their victim for a while, there has to be some penalty for Vox Mac and his plan going completely wrong. There have to be stakes. Probably not a life at stake. There are other ways to make the players feel it when things go wrong. It may be that everything I'm saying seems perfectly obvious to you, and for some of you it is, but something I've noticed, DMs who push their story over the player's adventure often don't realize they're doing it. As I said earlier, they feel like there's lots of player choice, but they mean trivial choices. Choice of spell, or choice of which door to open. But D&D is not the story you want to tell. It's the thing that happens at the table. If you already know all the good bits, then you don't need players. So here's my challenge to you. Are there points in your adventure where you have no real idea what happens next? Where the players have a goal, but you have no idea how they're going to achieve it? Where the bad guy is going to spring his plan and you have no idea how the players will react? Because that ignorance, that absence of a correct answer, is an empty space. When you leave those spaces empty, you create the opportunity for the players to fill it with the only thing that matters. The only thing they'll remember and talk about. Their plans. Their plans. Their actions and the consequences. And then they'll all go to Gen Con and tell Chris Perkins about their character. That's it for this episode, folks. Thanks for watching. People have asked about my D&D live stream on Tuesday nights. I have no idea if we'll keep doing it, but what I have noticed is the audience for the live stream is its own thing, distinct from the audience for this channel. I have no plans to stop doing this. I sometimes put these videos on hold as I experiment with new stuff, but I promise to keep doing these videos as long as you're watching. As always, there are no ads here. I do not have a Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, please come by my Amazon page. There's a link in the doobly-doo. I am an independent author. I write hard-boiled fantasy. Four bucks a book on Kindle, of which I get three bucks. If you buy both books, I get six bucks, and you get two books. And you might like them. That's it, everybody. Peace. Out.